Hi there, this is Jason. Uh, in this tutorial for Moodle, I'm going to demonstrate for you how you can um, sort of operate your course a little bit differently. Um, what you're looking at right here on this screen is what I would call perhaps a traditional way of using the Moodle LMS. Um, and that is that I have a, a sort of title here, I've got a menu. Um, in another tutorial I showed you how you can actually build this menu in a way that removes what's called the scroll of death. So that, um, for example, there are a lot of topics in this, in this uh, particular course that scroll down like that. But by building this menu here, we can actually click on a menu item and only that unit comes up. And it allows the learners to scroll about um, and go through the, the course step by step and only have the unit that they're currently working on appear in the interface. Um, and as you can see there are documents that are downloaded um, as part of the things they have to uh, read or access or work through and then they've got their uploads for their assignments. Uh, there could be quizzes and all sorts of stuff in there. Um, but you don't necessarily even need to use these topic blocks in this way. So I'm going to show you a slightly different course. Uh, I'm going to go over to a different course where we've done things a little bit differently. Um, and in this case, if I just uh, nick over to the student role to show you what the students will see here. Um, in this case, there's no topic blocks appearing at all. We've got a menu, but instead of going to topic blocks, what we're actually going to from this menu are book module pages. Um, so instead of a, a topic block popping up down here or scrolling down through those topic blocks, uh, you'll see if we, um, if we click on any of these links, um, what we'll actually go to is a book page. Okay, and the book page uh, has a, a table of contents here with all the, di the different lessons um, and we've still got downloadable assignments that are then uploaded so they're downloadable from here so we ask them to download a, uh, an assignment like this which they then fill out um, and then when they've finished all that they can upload it here by clicking on this button here and it will take them to the upload the upload option now um, those functions are done in topic blocks, but as you can see, what we can do here is we can put a uh, embed a video, we can put a one, two, three step uh, sort of section to the lesson. We can present the overall lesson and the downloadable stuff and the uh, the upload assignment uh, stuff is built into this page. Um, and we're not actually using, if I go back to the home page, we're not actually using any topic blocks at all. So it doesn't matter what we click on here, it just takes us to the relevant page of a book module and all the things we need to do in terms of downloading or watching or uploading an assignment are embedded through this page. So, you know, how do we do that? Okay, um, if I go back to my normal role as a teacher, what you'll see is that we still have um, all of our topic blocks here, but we've done things a little bit differently. What we've done is, um, first of all, we've built all our content in book modules like this, and we've put them in one topic block down here. And for all the assignments and the, uh, the downloads, we've put them in blocks as well. So we've got a document vessel and an upload vessel. So all the assignments are built in here, just like you would in a normal topic block. Um, and all the actual assignments where they need to upload stuff for assessment is put in an, in the upload vessel section. So these are just two topic blocks. Um, but if I go and turn my, turn my editing on, I'll show you what we've done with this. Um, go back down. Okay, if I go back down to that content again. All right, what you can see is that we've made this invisible. Um, so we've put all our documents in and we've put all our assignments in and we've put in all our book modules down here and we've actually made all the topic blocks invisible. Now that's basically done by there's a little eye here Now, if I turn that back on um, you can see this is what you normally see when you are um, in Moodle when you're using a topic block you'll notice that everything has the eye on so the topic block over here has the eye on and all the uh, book modules would have their the eye open which means it's visible 
But if we turn that invisible and hide it, um, it hides everything. What the trick is to hide the topic over here or the week, what, whichever format you're using, but then to turn all of these back on. So this needs to be hidden, but these need to be visible. So if I click those back on so that the color appears again, so we can see that they're turned on. What that basically means, the way the, the way Moodle reads this, is that we the topic block itself will be invisible, but the actual content will be visible um, if we link to it in some way. So um, the other thing you need to remember is um, when you've turned all those uh, topic blocks invisible but turned the actual activities back on, same with the, you can see here I've made the topic block invisible but all these uh, resources are visible. And the same for this one, the actual topic block is invisible but everything else is visible. Um, the trick is in your uh, settings, if you go to edit settings for your overall course here, um, you see I've got topics format here but where it says hidden sections, you want to click on the option that says hidden sections are completely invisible. The other way to do it is to have hidden sections just shown in collapsed form, but we don't want that because what, what it will do is it will, it will show the topics as collapsed lines underneath the main page. And we don't want them to be visible at all, we just want a nice clean interface. So we want to click on hidden sections are completely invisible. Okay, and what that does is um, when you go back to your student mode again um, and turn your editing off, um, you'll only see this menu, you won't see any of those topic blocks underneath. Even though the content is still accessible inside those topic blocks, um, but here's what we can now do. For example, if I go to one of these book module pages, uh, and I'm now in edit mode, um, what it allows us to do is I should probably uh, open open the page in two screens here just so we can see so you can see what I'm doing okay if I go back down to my resources again because what I'm doing here is a, a basic process of um, here's my page I'm just going to go into edit mode for this page to show you what, what happens here um, here's my interface here now what I want to do is link from this box here to the actual download um, and this is B3 so B3 would be this one in this screen what I want to do is go to this resource make sure that the eye is on and right click on it and copy the link address okay now it, I'm in Chrome so in other browsers there's going to be a different option there I think you can just um, copy the link uh, there's different ways of phrasing that but you, you want to be able to copy that code um, copy link address and then over here you just want to highlight this text here that you want to link to that activity uh, and then you want to link to that so you'll put in you'll just p control V for the link because you've copied the uh, the link code or HTML or address you just control V to paste that in and in this case because it's a download I want it to open in a new window and then I'll press insert and then when I save that change, um, it means that when I click on that, it's actually going to bring up that download, just like that. Okay. Um, so the same thing happens when we do the uh, assignment upload. So if I go back into edit mode again, right, that's that was for the download that we wanted to have the learners download. Now if I go down to the assignment uh, upload, and I go down to my upload vessel I can copy this link as well by right clicking I'm going to copy the link address and then over here I'm going to highlight this this text the one I want the learners to click on to, uh, to go to their assessment page and again I just where it says link URL I just control V or paste insert that and then save changes and what that will now do is it will um, create a direct link to that assessment okay so I'll just show you what I mean I click on that and it takes us to the assessment upload so you can see what we're doing is um, we're just linking to the functions where um, using all our content it's like making a topic block inside the book module with the obvious benefit that we um, 
we get a table of contents down the side. It doesn't look messy like that when you're uh, when you're in student mode. Um, I might just go back and go back into student mode so you can see that. Um, what the learners will see is a is a beautifully clean interface. Um, sorry, I'll just switch my role back to student. So the learners will only click on a link. They'll get a book module page. Um, they'll get a link to the download they need to fill out. They'll get a link to where they can upload that. They can still go and see their grades as per normal. Um, and why would you do this? You know, why would you do it this way? Uh, there's a couple of different reasons. I think you can give a lot more context to your content here. Um, you can build out a nice looking page. You can embed video just like we have here because in this particular course there's a lot of video tutorials, uh, demonstrations and things they need to um, pay attention to and then emulate themselves. Um, but they can also review nicely by, go, by getting a, a table of contents here. The book module pages are just like creating mini web pages but you get this nice table of contents and you get these arrow buttons that allow you to uh, move back and forth through the book content. Um, and if I just go back to that other course which was the one that used uh, topic blocks you know, in this case, you can't always uh, add a lot of context to what you want the learners to do here in the topic block. It's just like a list of links and resources and, and stuff like that. Um, whereas when you're in the book module and you're just linking to those um, topics, as I said, you can you can actually build a nice looking page that gives a little bit more context, gives uh, some more directions, you can give a nice sequence of things you want the learners to be able to do, um, and it it feels a lot more like working off uh, a web-based site rather than working off a, a database, I guess. Um, so it's just a matter of, as I said, um, just uh, creating a, um, if I go back to my normal role, as I said, if you just put all your resources in blocks like this, um, you can organize them however it works for you, put your book modules in one section, put your assignments in another, your downloads or your links to resources in another, um, and then you can just link to those by copying the link address. Uh, as I said, the key though is to make sure, just to remind you again, is that um, but you've got to make sure you turn certain things visible and, in, and some things invisible. So in this case, um, you make sure that the topic is invisible, but then you go through and you click on all these things to make sure that they are visible. This needs to be invisible. These things need to be visible. Don't don't mistake what happens with that. Um, it's not like these things now appear on your main page. They don't because the topic is invisible. And in your settings, when you went into edit settings, you made sure that all hidden topics are completely invisible. And that means that um, when your learners are in the page, um, they will not see those topics at all. Um, I'll just go back one more time just to show you what I mean. Um, they're only going to see a menu, and we've just created links to book module pages from this menu. So we've built this menu in the topic uh, header, uh, the course header, and then we've just gone through and created links to book module pages. Um, and then the book module pages have links to downloads and assignments, but for the learners, they just get two nice clean interfaces there. Um, so it's just another way to think about building your course. It's a little bit more user friendly, I think, um, and it's it's a good way to present your content to the learners um, because not you know as I said the topic blocks can be good, um, but you do tend to list the activities and the uh, resources rather than contextualizing them or designing them in a way that that shows what you want to do in what order um, and you know tips and tricks and doing a bit of color and highlighting to to show certain things um, which the book module is much better for I think whether you're using web pages or a book module um, I've created other material uh, tutorials to show you how to build a book module um, and I've created other tutorials to show you how to do those downloads and those assignment uploads. But this is a way to pull it all together and use the actual book module as your prime um, 
sort of way of presenting your content and your activities um, and not having any topic blocks appear at all for the learners and, and that can be a nice way to apply your course. So I hope you find that useful and uh, good luck with your moodling.